Good evening and welcome to Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium here at Ottawa Glendorf High School for tonight's matchup between the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Napoleon Wildcats. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Jerry Snodgrass. And Jerry, the holidays are right around the season. These teams are going to get a little bit of a break here, and you know that both of these teams want to come away with a victory and feeling good going into the Christmas holiday. You know, they do, and you know, number one, it's hard to believe we're about halfway through the season already, but you know, this is an interesting time, and I love coming to Ottawa Glandorf, but two, this is a great matchup. You know, two very good programs, and should be very, very good. We are underway at Ottawa Glandorf controlling the opening tip as Napoleon able to get in there, get their hands on it, knocks it out of bounds. Possession will stay with the Lady Titans. We'll take a look at tonight's starting lineup first for the Ottawa Glendorf Titans. They're going to start number 14, Maggie Vierhoff. Number 22, Kaylin Grothaus. Number 32, Caitlin Kimmett. Number 34, Katie Kaufman. And number three, the freshman, Carson Erford. You know, I'm really glad to see Maggie Vierhoff back. She missed so much of the season last year with knee injury, and you can tell she still has it. Uh, you know, bandaged up and everything, but uh, glad to have her back and, you know, back on the court where she belongs. Katie Kaufman not able to handle that entry pass as it went off her fingertips, went out of bounds. So Napoleon with the basketball, we come out to the, what everybody is known to, or used to seeing out of the Lady Titans, and that's that pressure defense. They love to get after it and love to get turnovers. And I think that's such a big key in tonight's game. You know, number one, for them to force turnovers and create opportunities, but two, for, especially for Napoleon, who's only averaging 37 points a game, they've got to protect the basketball. So we'll take a look at the starting lineup for the Napoleon Wildcats. Number two, Carly Sonnenberg. Number five, Michaela Cruz. Number 10, Sophie Chips. Number 11, Lila Huddle. And number 14, Ella Tassler. And Napoleon had that turnover. OG on the run out, though. Napoleon able to get the ball back. First minute of game play is passed. We are still looking for our first points of tonight. You know, and I, I mentioned earlier about, you know, a team that Napoleon the, uh, averages 37 points a game, but, you know, that's that's by design. You know, they're, they're a little younger than they have been in some years past, and, you know, they protect the basketball, get the best shot they possibly can. So it's not because they can't score. It's just, and I should say, they need to be efficient. That shot is going to be off. Rebound going to come down to the Titans. Here's Erford. She's going to work with the left hand, goes all the way in, and gets it easy off the glass for two. And what a great crossover move that time. So Carson Erford gets the scoring started as Ottawa Glandorf has the early lead 2 0. Erford only a freshman. And Sonnenberg took that hand off and got it up quickly, but had to pick her dribble up, and that's going to lead to another turnover. Ottawa Glandorf on the run out. Going to feed Kaufman on the inside. She's going to take a couple of steps, and we're going to have a travel. She started to lose her balance, and she was trying to split some defenders and just couldn't catch herself. Well, you can really see, you know, early on, which we knew would be the difference in the styles right now in terms of, you know, Ottawa Glandorf, a pressing team, trying to get the uh, scoring in transition, trying to score um, quick. They're averaging in a uh, little over 55, almost 56 a game. But, you know, on the other hand, you're seeing the point really, really trying to take advantage of time and possess the basketball. Ottawa Glandorf comes into tonight's matchup 6-2 and two overall, undefeated in conference play. Napoleon coming in, they have a few more losses that they are, as they are 5-5 five and five on the season. But when you take a look at their five losses, a combined 30 points total. They're only averaging six-point difference in those losses. They play very tight games. They've been in, in all of them, have been a very competitive squad from the very beginning. And, you know, I really, obviously you attribute that to good players too, but, you know, great coaching. You know, Corey Kreinbrink knows how to keep teams in games. Uh, no, you know, and that's such a goal when you're a coach. You know, just even if you're playing against somebody, you're, you're overmatched, keep the game close and give us a chance. Three-point shot on its way was no good. Rebound comes down to the Titans. Kalen Grothaus, skip pass across court. Erford can't connect. Rebound comes down to Napoleon. You can see Erford kind of bobbled that pass a little bit, and I just threw a shot off a little bit. So had some trouble there in the backcourt, but Napoleon able to gather that one in. Sophie Chips going to try to go in. She has that one sent back by Kaufman. Otto Glandorf's going to have the run out. They have numbers. Slip pass, Erford. Two-pointer up and good. Carson Erford does a nice job running the floor that time, being in position for her teammate. And we are going to have a timeout as Napoleon did not like the pressure that they were getting from 
Ottawa Glendorf, they want to talk about it. Just going to be a 30-second timeout, so we will keep it here. Tonight, our scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, division of Alts Seamless Spouting. Nate Garlock alongside Jerry Snodgrass. And, you know, Jerry, you mentioned it a little bit, um, some of the keys to this game. One of them was the turnover battle on both sides, Napoleon protecting the ball and the turnovers that Ottawa Glendorf is going to force. What are some other keys that we could look for tonight? Well, you know, also for uh, Napoleon, I, I, they, I think they need to control the offensive board, or excuse me, control the defensive boards and not give up second chances. I think I, almost every coach can say that, but I think that's so critical. And they've got to play solid defense. I mean, that's, again, you know, another thing that everybody says. If you're looking out of a Glandorf, you know, they need to create those possessions. And they're doing it with their pressure. Uh, good decisions on the offense because, you know, they do turn the ball over quite a bit. So they can afford to when they have a lot of possessions. But that's a big key for them. Them, and they also, on the other side, they need to get second offensive, or they need to get second chance shots. And there's one of those forced opportunities right there as Ottawa Glandorf was able to get that ball, uh, put a tip on it, and Napoleon couldn't save it, so the ball comes down to the Titans. Fight down low. Chloe Glenn, who had checked into the game for Ottawa Glandorf, she gets her first two of the night. She's still battling back from that knee injury, but you can tell she is still a force to be reckoned with. Well, and you look at that too, I mean, that that's such a wasted possession, you know, uh, for Napoleon that time. Ottawa Glendorf quickly coming down the floor. But a nice job that time by Sophie Chips to get her hands high, able to pull that one down for a turnover. 6-0, Ottawa Glendorf on top. Napoleon still looking for their first points of tonight as we are under four to go in the opening quarter. And they do a nice job on that possession as Molly Rosebrook gets in the scoreboard. And you look at where their, their shot opportunities have come from. Almost every shot by Napoleon has come in the paint. They just had a couple that just didn't fall. So they're doing a very, very good job of attacking Ottawa Glandorf on the offensive end. We're going to have our first foul of the night. This one's going to go against Napoleon, and it will send Chloe Glenn to the game, or I'm sorry, to the free throw line, as that foul was going to be called on number 12, Lily Cruz, her first, team's first. And as you see, Chloe Glenn able to knock down the first free throw. So lots of substitutions here early in this game as both teams want to try to keep the tempo, want to have some fresh legs. We're going to see them go to the bench quite a bit tonight. Especially, you know, if you're out of a Glendorf where you're really pressing a lot, running a lot, they're going to get a lot of people playing time. Chloe Glenn not able to connect on the second of her two free throws. So quickly, Napoleon down the floor. Nice pass on the inside. As we see Jenna Oberhaus able to get that two-pointer in. Offensive rebound comes down to the Titans on the other side of the floor. Put back is good. And you see Micah Aldrich get her first two of the night as well. We've got a quick stop into plays. We're going to have a substitution. That's going to allow Ottawa Glandorf to get where they want set here for this uh, defensive pressure. As Napoleon, as every team basically that plays Ottawa Glandorf is in for a long night and when it comes to this pressure. You know, again, that was a second chance opportunity for Ottawa Glandorf, but that was a, one of those long rebounds that's so hard to get. So Napoleon able to get out of it, almost had that one poked away, but did a nice job gathering it back in. Cruz hands, his, hands it off right now as Napoleon does just a little bit of a weave up top. Dangerous pass that time, but able to get it back 10. Now here's Chips. Chips hands it off, gets it back. She's around the three-point line, gets cut off right around the free throw line. Now she's in some trouble. And I believe he's going to call offensive foul. Must have been a little bit of a push off that I didn't really see from this angle. But. So Sophie Chips. Nobody's arguing, so. And yeah, she was trying to create some space there. She yeah. picked that one up, and you saw that uh, she was getting a lot of pressure that time. And so she had to do something trying to create some of that space. As Lily Hazelman was right there putting that pressure on her. Chloe Glenn down low one more time. And she is putting in some work down low. We're going to have another foul. This one's going to go on Cora Burrell. It's going to be her first, team second. Good job of an entry pass that time, getting the ball inside. She had position, used her body well. 
Chloe's first free throw is on its way. This one is going to go. So many of these girls from Ottawa Glandorf went through such an injury bug in the last year. It's glad to see so many. You see an awful lot of braces on people right now. Lot, but, lots of knees. But they're back. And as Glenn's second free throw comes up short, fight for the loose ball. And this one's going to go out of bounds and going to go back to the Wildcats. You know, some of that can be attributed to, um, you know, we saw some of these injuries creep up in soccer. Yes, we did. You know, the success of the Ottawa Glendorf girls soccer team making it all the way to the state finals this year. They got a late start on basketball. Um, Lily Hazelman, she's been nursing a knee injury that came from soccer, kept her out of, a, of yes, some games. Yes, it did. And so, you know, they have had a lot that they've had to battle back from a late start injuries, still rounding into form. But, you know, when you talk to Coach Troy Yant, there are no excuses from this Ottawa Glendorf team. He still expects these girls to come out, play the system, play hard. But that is also another reason why we see this bench and this depth that they've right. created because they need to bring girls in and out as they are trying to preserve one injuries. They're trying to manage that. And you got to get this depth because, as they know from the last couple of years, you know, injuries happen and it's the next girl up. Right. You know, and I talked about what a good coach Corey Kreinbrink is, but, you know, Troy Yank goes without saying, I think, you know, coach of the year last year in the WBL, but also, you know, sometimes you say, well, people get that because they win a lot. Well, there's a reason they win a lot. So well coached. Three-point shots no good as Maggie Verhoff was just off on that one. You saw Chloe Glenn go to the floor, as did Sophie Chips. Sophie Chips has been very active here yeah. in this first quarter, all over the place defensively and offensively, trying to keep her team within striking distance. I like Sophie Chips. She's done a very good job of trying to handle that pressure. Drive all the way to the basket that time by Jenna Oberhaus, but... Lost the handles on it. We're going to have another whistle as the ball will go back to Ottawa Glandorf. A couple more substitutions as they continue moving girls in and out. Two substitutions for OG and Napoleon one substitution of their own as Macy Ripke checks into the game for the first time. Napoleon goes to a zone here, hopefully to keep that ball out of the paint, their idea of that. Force the outside shot. And slow the game down a little bit. Kaufman puts it on the floor, tries to get to the basket, has some contact. She's going to go to the free throw line for the first time tonight. That foul is going to be called on Ella Tassler. It's her first foul of the night is the team's fourth. Kaufman lines up her first shot. This one is going to miss everything as she looks a little bit in disbelief on that one. Yeah, she's laughing about it. So every player goes through it sometime. Kaufman's a six foot post player. She had her 17, she had a high of 17 against Wapak, but also last week against uh, uh, Bethel. Kaufman gets the second one to go down and Ottawa Glendorf immediately back into the pressure. Nice job by Sonnenberg to get out of it as she gets into the front court. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, that pressure defensively, it's not just about turning the ball over, you know, and getting a turnover. It's about just forcing them to lose their, their patience. Erford all the way in. That one's no good. Offensive rebound, and that one is put back as Grodhaus gets her first two points of the night. I know Coach Kreinbrink does not want to use another timeout with only about 40 seconds left in the quarter, but at the same time, normally they would, you know, just to slow it down a little bit and stay in the game. 41 seconds left to go. Ottawa Glendorf on top, 13 to 4. Napoleon trying to get something going here at the end of the quarter. See Lila Huddle working against Erford. Erford gets her hands on it, goes out of bounds, and will stay with the Wildcats. And that is so tough offensively to just continue. You know, you're more worried about the pressure in front of you than you are who's open. And it just, your concentration is just totally taken away. You know, and even though the Erford name is very familiar to most people who follow girls basketball in this area, Carson, just a freshman, but she does not play like it. No, she does not. You can tell how much confidence the rest of the team has in her. So we had a tie up under the basket. Went back to Ottawa Glandorf. 15 seconds left to go. We'll see if OG chooses to hold for the last shot or try to see what they can get. Kaufman's going to create, and she's able to get it in. 
I like that too. You know, we, we, we sit here think maybe they will hold it for that shot, but hey, you take advantage of the opportunity. Sonnenberg picks up the basketball that time, and you saw a little bit of frustration as that pressure, that's what happens as you try to work against it, eventually wears you down. And Carly Sonnenberg showed a little bit there at the end of the quarter. That's going to bring the first quarter to a close. Ottawa Glendorf on top, 15 to 4. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard is presented by Ultima Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, the vision of alt seamless spouting. We are at the Supreme Court where Ottawa Glandorf is all over Napoleon here early, and they are on top 15 to 4. Nate Garlock alongside Jerry Snodgrass. You know, and Jerry, we talked about it a lot, and so far the story is the pressure from Ottawa Glandorf and the offense that they're able to get from the defense they show. Yeah, and it's very difficult, you know, to, you know, it, it just gets worse because you're so worn down from it that it, it's so hard to, to rebound from that constant pressure, especially when OG uses such a good bench. And a great inbounds play that time. Wide open underneath the basket was Lila Huddle. Couldn't get it to go in, but Chloe Glenn comes over, gets the contact, and Huddle will go to the free throw line for two. At least from this angle, it looked like she got her pretty good and does, does what most players do. Like, what, me? It was great catch up as it looked like Huddle was gonna have an easy yeah. layup. And she misses the first and one of her free throws. You know, pans out. Pans out to be a good thing. Hard to say that a foul like that is a good thing, but. Huddle lines up her second free throw. This one is up. It is no good as well. Rebound down to Erford. And that's where, you, if you're Napoleon, you, you've got to capitalize on those. Your, your scoring opportunities are going to be so limited. You have to get those. Kaufman down low. Looks like she might have taken an inadvertent shot in, in maybe around the mouth. She grabs a hold of it, checks it out, makes sure she's okay, and she's heading back down the floor. Napoleon able to save that one from going out of bounds. Here's Chips. Chips works, changes direction. Works nice footwork on the inside. Can't get it to go. Well, she does everything, doesn't she? She does everything she can possibly do. Kaufman kicks this one out to Erford. She swings it over. She's looking down inside to Glenn. Kaufman's going to take it herself. No good. Glenn with the rebound. The putback is up, and this one's good. Chloe Glenn now with six points here in the half as Ottawa Glendorf extends their lead to 17-4. to And they're backing off that pressure a little bit, getting back to half court, picking up man on the half court now. Chips tried to split some defenders that time. Erford reaches in and grabs it. Right now, Napoleon just trying to find an open shot. Huddle down in the corner. Trying to find someone down low, but Kaufman does a nice job. They have to push it back out to Chips up top. Points. So many of those open, in the, in the lane shots by Napoleon early on all came from backdoor cuts. OG has really done a good job now of stopping those. Cruz did a nice job of filing Michaela Cruz down low. Uh, she was trying to get it over to Huddle. It gets poked out, so the basketball will stay with the Wildcats. As they are trying hard to get something going on offense, but Ottawa Glendorf doing a great job of cutting off those passing lanes and not giving them a lot of space. Hazelman almost able to get her hands on this one. Chips recovers. She gets to the glass with the right hand off. Chips, the 5'6 senior, doing a whale of a job. Left all alone, three-pointer is good for Caitlin Kimmett. First three-pointer of the night for either team. Puts Otto Glandorf on top, 20 to six. You know, Caitlin's averaging eight points a game, but that's another thing that makes Otto Glandorf so strong is so much of a threat is they're so balanced. Anybody can score. Michaela Cruz couldn't handle the entry pass. It's gonna be a turnover all the way in. As we see Caitlin Grothaus get another two points. And Otto Glandorf right now doing a nice job getting to the basket and being able to finish getting some of these easy layups. Oh 
Michaela Cruz is going to let the offense reset. They're going to try to run something and get someone open. This one's going to go to Chip. She's going to drive one more time off the glass, and that's her spot. When she can get there on the floor, she's been able to finish, and Napoleon is going to take the timeout. 5-12 left to go here in the first half. Ottawa Glendorf on top, 22-8. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard is presented by Ultima Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X, Ultimate Outdoor, division of Alt Seamless Spouting. 5-12 left to go here in the first half. Napoleon finally finding some things um, positive on offense, and so far that positiveness has been Sophie Chips. Yes, it has, and as I said, I did not have her scoring average, but she is, has been their leading scorer in seven out of their ten games. Here's Hazelman, gonna move it around into the corner. Kimmick gets rid of it. Trying to find somebody down low. Kimmick has to pull it back out. Three pointer on its way. Offensive rebound. And they have a lot of things moving, uh, a lot of moving pieces going on down there. And Micah Aldrich was able to come up with that putback. Can't get it to go down, but she's going to go to the free throw line. And that's a tough thing when you're Napoleon in a zone, especially that backside rebound is so tough to get. And that's where that shot came off, which they do most of the time. And again, that's such a key for Napoleon is to, to get, you know, get that defensive rebound and not give up second chances. Micah Aldridge not able to connect on that first free throw. She lines up her second shot on its way and good. 23-8 on with Glandorf on top. Chips is going to bring it up for the Wildcats. Ottawa Glendorf giving him a little bit more space than what we've seen on other inbounds that time as they got down quickly to get set up. And here it goes to steal. So whether they're bringing the full court pressure or they're just letting themselves get set up in the half court, that defense is always active, getting the hands in there and almost coming up with the steal. Instead, Veerhoff is going to get whistled for the foul, but it was still very good defense down low. And you're, you look at that and you're just waiting for them to turn those jets on again and go full court. This shot got deflected. It's going to be no good. Ottawa Glendorf is going to come up quickly on the floor. Kimmett It's going to move around the free throw line, decides to kick it back out to Erford. Erford's going to drive, puts it up off the glass and in. Carson Erford, six points now on the night. She has done a nice job here in the first half. Very good with, you know, handling the basketball, very good with her offensive moves and gets to the glass under control. Tassler has that one taken away. Long pass up to Erford. Erford drops it off. This shot is no good. Still ends up in the hands of Erford. Got rejected. She tries to kick it out, but the Wildcats doing a nice job coming up with that steal. Lila Cruz has to get rid of it. And Chips going with the left hand, tries to spin, has no space, kicks it back out. Three-pointer on its way and good. Ella Tassler, and that is a big basket for the Wildcats as they get their first three-pointer of the night. That's only Tafsler's third three-pointer on the year. Maggie Vierhoff sends a three-pointer. That one's no good. Rebound ends up in the hands of Chips. She's going to pass it up ahead. No good, but we're going to have a foul call as this one, I believe, is going to go on Kaylin Kimmett. Nice little run right now by Napoleon. And that foul did go against Kimmett. So Caitlin Kimmett picks up her first foul of the night. It is the third team foul for Ottawa Glendorf. Molly Rosebrook lines up the free throw. That one's no good. Jenna Overhouse checks in to Wildcats, number 34. Napoleon so far has not been able to connect on any of their free throws. And when you're struggling on offense, not being able to get the uncontested ones to go down can really hurt. And they're shooting a respectable 65% on the year from the line. There's one. 25-12, under three to go here in the half. Hoffman all the way across the court. Erford sends it. 
That one's no good. Kaufman comes up the rebound. She has to kick it back out. Here's Glenn. She's going to shoot the three-pointer. That one's no good as well. Another offensive rebound for the Titans. This one's going to go up as they are working underneath against three different Wildcats. And we are going to have a jump ball call. Possession arrow is going to favor the Lady Titans. Yeah, you just, you just can't give up the offensive rebounds like that, but it's also so difficult when you're in a zone. So the inbound comes out long to Kaufman. She's going to give it right back to Chloe down low, but this one gets pokes away. Chips, she's working. Tries to see if she can't find an opening. Has to pull it back out. Cruz trying to find somebody to go with. It. Ends up in the hands of Rosebrook, but she has it taken away. Long pass up ahead to Aldrich. Can't get that one to go. Glenn with the offensive rebound. That one's no good. Third opportunity, Glenn. She puts it up off the glass, no good. Another offensive rebound. As Maggie Vierhoff was fighting tough for that basketball, and it's eventually gonna go out last touched by Napoleon. And right now, you just have to say, a big two things that have made a difference in this game so far, are turnovers against their press, or the pressure itself, and the offensive rebounds Cora by Otto Glendon. Cora Burrell checking in for the Wildcats as they're trying to get a little bit of size, but Kaufman does a nice job of finding the soft spot in that zone. She gets that one to go for two. And that's what she has done so well through the last couple of years is just getting that little soft spot against the zone, turns and just controls herself and a nice little jump shot, which is a tough shot from that area. Minute 30 left to go here in the half. As it has been all Ottawa Glandorf as Napoleon has really struggled offensively. Rosebrook on the turnaround. That one's no good. And I think right there is another good example as one and done for Napoleon. But every time it seems like Ottawa Glandorf has the basketball, you're either seeing the first one go down like that one from Kaufman or it's the second, third, and fourth opportunities. Yes, and you see how quick Ottawa Glandorf got down the court that time and really beat the defense down the court. Sophie Chips going to bring it up for the Wildcats one more time. Going to hand it off. As they are working that perimeter, just trying to see if they can't get the defense to overcommit. Chips tries to split some defenders, has it poked away as Chloe Glenn does a nice job of getting her hand on that basketball. Ends up going out of bounds off you know, the talked, leg of Chips. Yeah, and I talked earlier about, you know, Ottawa Glenn, or excuse me, Napoleon, you know, getting in the paint quite a bit, but at the same time, there's a lot of tall timber in there that makes it pretty difficult to get a clean shot. So Grothaus brings it up for Ottawa Glendorf, passes it off. Here's Erford back over to Grothaus. Looking inside to Kaufman, decides to take it down herself. They're back to a man-to-man. -man. Kimmett finds a cutting Erford, and Erford puts in the easy layup. You know, and you go back to that man-to-man, -man, you're so conscious of that ball side, you know, the cuts ball side, and then they go back door on you, and it's so, so tough to defend that. Michaela Cruz up around midcourt. Kicks it over to Chips. Chips with the long three-pointer from the corner, no good. Seven seconds left to go. Kimmett. She's going to bring it up. Gets it over to Erford. Erford's going to throw it up. Can't get the floater to go. And it is fitting that the last basket of the half is an off, off an offensive rebound as you see Katie Kaufman get the put back for two more. That is going to bring the first half to a close as Adela Glendorf is on top big, 33-12. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Welcome back. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Jerry Snodgrass, and we are just about underway here in the second half. And, Jerry, that first half, it was all Ottawa on both sides of the field. They let, let their defense do a lot of the work for them, and then it turned into some easy baskets on the offensive end. Yep, and I think really the, the tail of the first half was rebounding, offensive rebounding, and pressure defense. And I think that tells the story. We'll see what kind of adjustments Napoleon can make because they got to find a way to hold on to the basketball, and that is a good way to start the half. Nice back door to Chips as she's able to get that one in for two. And that's how you beat pressure. You try to get a good jab fake and go back door, and it was a nice little design play on the first play of the second half. Yeah. 
Both teams with their original starters out on the floor here to begin the third quarter. As Kimmett's shot, it goes a little bit long, ends up into the hands of Napoleon. Chips, she's going to drive. Goes through a couple of defenders, but has this one rejected. As Caitlin Kimmett did a great job of getting up, knocking that one away without picking up contact. And you know, if you're Coach Kreinberg, you're, you're telling, you're convincing your players, don't try to get this back in one possession. You know, take your time, win the quarter, and you never know at that point. Get, get it close, and that's what they're very, very good at anyhow. See Kaufman out guarding Chip. She ends up handing it off. It's Kaufman out there up top playing great defense. This man-to-man -man defense of Ottawa Glandorf causing all sorts of problems. Yeah, you Chip see. Chip sends that one. That one's no good, and we're going to have a whistle down low. This one's going to go on number 11, Lila Huddle. It'll be her second. And it, in that possession, you know, Lila Huddle was on the weak side of the offense, and, you know, they were going to reverse the ball to her and took a jab out. Great back cut, you know, going back door, but they couldn't see her through all that traffic. Kaufman works down low, gets this one off the glass for two. Boy, powered that up against a lot of pressure inside. Kaufman continues to have her big game as she is now up to 11 points on the night. Excuse me, nine points. Left all alone, three-pointer on its way. Cruz can't connect. Rebound down to Ottawa Glandorf. Roadhouse. Drops it off to Kaufman, and Kaufman's going to get called for the double dribble as she tried to go baseline and lost her footing. You know, Katie Kaufman is the one returning uh, all, all league player from last year's second team, all WBL, and returns and has been a good, good force for them. Huddle gets it up to Chips as she's working against a little bit of pressure from Ottawa Glandorf, just enough to make her think about it. Drive by Sonnenberg, and she gets it to go. Chips is dangerous. You know, she creates so much. You have to really, really honor her. And they come back with a three. Maggie Vierhoff puts the three-pointer in as Ottawa Glendorf wasted no time to get down there, gets the three-point try. But Maggie Vierhoff back in the backcourt. She's coming up limp. Yep. And uh -oh, she's going to have to hobble off off the floor, and that's the knee she has the brace on. Yes. So trainer is going to take a look at her. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Maggie Bierhoff being helped off the floor. She has a little bit of knee pain after that made three-point shot. Hopefully she will be okay. Boy, you hate to see that. She's had so much trouble with that over the last year, and she's finally back. And man, it just seems like some people are prone to that. That just, it won't go away. Kaylin Grothaus wastes no time, though, as things got restarted. She drove right around that right side and put that one up for two. It's out of a Glandorf now on top, 40 to 16. Gonna have another foul. This one is gonna go on Chloe Glenn. That is Chloe's second. It is the first team foul here in the second half. You know, one thing about Corey Crimebrink, coach, you know, for the Napoleon, for the Wildcats, is you know, he he has plays such a good schedule and uh, doesn't shy away. Of course, this is a natural rival, anyhow, but plays such a solid, solid schedule. Always trying to make his players better. So now Lily Hazelman to get whistled for the foul as they were working down low against Chips. She had Kaufman down there to contend with as well, and Kaufman almost able to get her hand on that one. Chips, she's going to try to drive, goes against three Titan wow. defenders and gets that one to go down. She's such a gutty player. I just, again, I love players like that. And then Grothaus comes right back down again. She puts in another one. Forty-two, eighteen, four twenty-five left to go here in the third quarter. 
Cruz trying to find somebody, ends up getting in the hands of Tassler. Tassler, though, being guarded by Kaufman, has to get rid of it. And now Napoleon's got to restart one more time. Cruz hands it off to Huddle, and Huddle has it poked away. Able to gather it back in. It's, right now, it just kind of seems like that Wildcat offense is just not sure of what to do or where to go with the basketball. Boy, Kalen Grothaus, only a sophomore, plays such solid defense on the perimeter. They are working hard. They are trying to get open, and Ottawa Glendorf is fighting through screens. They are playing really tight man-to-man -man defense. I mean, it is impressive to watch the job that they are doing right now. And Chloe Glenn just swats that one out of the air and out of bounds. And you look at the last couple possessions, you know, Napoleon works, 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 works. And they've been able to get a score on occasion, but go down the other end, Otto Glandorf just one or two passes and they're getting a quick shot and scoring, so. And then Kaufman takes that one right away. Pass goes up to Glenn. Glenn gets it to Grothaus. She goes to the right side and gets it in. Grothaus now with six points in the quarter. Looks easy, but that's a tough catch on the run like that. So Kalen Grothaus now has 10 points on the night as Ottawa Glendorf is on top, 44-18. Huddle, she's going to send one. That one's no good. Offensive rebound comes down to the Wildcats, though. Nice put back yes. as number 20, Jenna Oberhaus, is able to get that one up and in. Boy, I cannot overemphasize the pressure that Ottawa Glendorf puts on. It's just, it's relentless. Whether it's full court, whether it's quarter court, half court, doesn't matter. It's just relentless. Well, and I think what's so impressive about their defense, and I think what makes them so successful, obviously they're able to execute. That's the first and foremost. But it doesn't just create the turnovers like we've talked about. And you mentioned this in the first half. It's not just a physical thing, it is a mental thing. You get worn out mentally, physically from having to face this. You get frustrated. And if you can't find some way of finding some success and kind of getting some positives going, it's, it's like that snowball and it turns into, you know, almost an avalanche on you as you see a three-pointer from the other corner goes down. Yeah, and you know that you, you just, that pressure just takes their offense away and just makes, you know, survival. It's survival of the basketball, and it's, it's very, very tough. So Carly Brinkman comes up with that big three-pointer. We're going to have a jump ball on the loose ball. And this one is going to go back to the Titans. Back in the tight line, number 32, Kaitlyn Kimmett replacing... See Kaitlyn Kimmett come in as Chloe Glenn will take a seat. Now Lily Hazelman is going to control the ball for the Titans. I watched Lily Hazelman play an awful lot of soccer this fall and did such a great job. A couple of extra passes almost got away, but Brinkman was able to gather it in. Can't get the shot to go down. We're going to have another tie up, and this time it will go back to the Wildcats. In fact, we covered the state semifinal, I believe it was, and uh, over at Mansfield, and I think that's where she missed the game and was un not able to play. Yeah, I was able to call their state final That's matchup down um, in Columbus. And she played, but yes. not nearly as you know effective or as much as they would have liked to her of. Now Napoleon trying to find something, trying to get something going here offensively. As they have just run into a buzzsaw that is the Titan defense tonight. And we have a five-second Oh, full oh, no, timeout. we all have a timeout, timeout first. So Napoleon will take the timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard presented by Ulti Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Provola X Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt's Seamless Spouting. So Napoleon took the timeout before they lost possession on the five-second call. As once again, you know, it's kind of like I feel like a broken record tonight, but the Ottawa Glendorf Titan defense has just been something else. You know, even sideline, baseline out of bounds, it's just so difficult to get it in. Hazelman almost comes up with the steal. The Wildcats able to maintain that possession. And you see that after two, three passes now. Look where the ball's at. It's still, you know, 20 feet away from the basket. 
Huddle's got to do something with the basketball, but she ends up having it taken away. Brinkman pushes it up ahead. Aldrich has it knocked away. It'll stay with the Titans. You know, during that timeout, you know, they gave the uh, halftime score of the Ottawa Glendorf boys, and so, you know, it looks from, from that half of Ottawa's here, half of Ottawa's there, and another half is at the Red Pig. So, <laughs> okay, I realize I'm not good at math. There aren't three halves, but it, uh, it just a great community that supports their sports. Brinkman has that one go off her shoe, able to gather it back in as Hazelman's going to take the basketball up top with 50 seconds left to go. 27-point lead for the Titans. That one's almost taken away. We're going to have a foul call. And this one, it actually will go back to, it's going to go back to the huddle, or I'm sorry, excuse me, it's going to go back to the Wildcats as Lila Huddle was down there on the floor. Not quite sure what the call was on that they one. Called a travel, but I don't know. I didn't see the officials uh, at, at first what they called, but either way, it's a turnover. So Chip's going to go to work. She's going to put the two pointer up and gets that one to go. You know, I did figure out she's averaging right around 16 a game, and she's had several games of 18 and one of 19, and she's just a solid, solid player. Long pass ends up in the hands of Kimmett. She lets the three-pointer go. Caitlin Kimmett with a big three-point shot, her second of the game. Five seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Chips passes it off. Three-pointer on its way, and that one's going to be too long. So after three quarters, Ottawa Glandorf on top, 50-22. to We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Are you out of town or can't get WOSN? WOSN is now streaming our broadcast channel 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. Hey, Mr. Snodgrass, I know you go all over the state to do about 100 different things, it seems like, because you stay very, very busy. Not everywhere gets WOSN, but with this new stream app, you can watch it anywhere more, you go in the more, state. More, more get it than you might think. And as we've said for years, it's one of the best scouting networks that exists. So fourth quarter underway here at the Supreme Court as Ottawa Glendorf has been on top all night long. You know, as I was going down and, and, and looking at Napoleon preparing for this, you know, and looking at some of their scores, and you know, they're five and five and five overall coming into this. They've got a nice win over Perrysburg. Uh, that's in the Northern Lakes League. And I saw Perrysburg play against Northview, and hey, Perrysburg's good. So yeah. they've got some good wins. And, you know, we talked about the, even the losses that they've had, you know, outside of tonight, which will be a, most likely a lopsided victory. You know, all of their wins have come on an average of six points, or all of their losses, excuse me, have only been at by average six points. So they have been in all of their games. So sometimes that record can be deceiving, which this will turn around. And this is a good, going to be a good victory for Ottawa Glendorf as well if they can hold on. When, you know, the Ottawa Glendorf opened the game, you know, pressing right off the bat, you know, and that's what you have to do. From a coach's perspective, I can, I'll can just say it, you hate to play against a Napoleon. <laughs> you know, they control possessions on you, and it just drives you nuts. And you've got to be well coached on the other side to be able to beat that and be patient. Chloe Glenn's first free throw is good. and I mean, you know, and on that... Yeah, we talked about Coach Yant and obviously, you know, the length and of his success over the years. And, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, you don't always see coaches that can make adjustments or they're willing to change the style that they play. You know, Ottawa Glendorf, they could have came out tonight. They could have played in zone. They could have, you know, let Napoleon bleed this clock and, and just hope that they miss shots because they knew that they're going to score quickly, but they haven't. They, for the majority of tonight, they've been in this man-to-man. -man. They have tried to force um, the... Um, force this pressure and try to force turnovers. They did not let Napoleon get comfortable, and that's why they're able to get out to this big lead. And that's what I love about Coach Ant too. You know that, that every single game is a milestone. Every single game is is you know a point that they have to make. You know, like okay, we're playing against this style. Can we do it? Yes, we can do it. Loose ball underneath ends up in the hands of the Wildcats. 
But now we're going to have a run out. Kaufman all by herself. Easy layup for two. You know, Ottawa Glandorf, they had a 36 game home winning streak uh, last year. I think Fort Laramie, I think, was the team that beat that. They've got Fort Laramie coming up on the schedule here at Fort Laramie coming up. I think it's in mid January. Fort Laramie, another team with just tremendous success yeah. year in and, and year out. These two programs, when they do play each other, it, it's a big deal. That'll be another jam packed game. And we are going to have a timeout. And it looks like it will be full. So we will step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard presented by Alt Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. You know, you were talking about, you know, Fort Laramie and their success, and Ottawa Glendorf, their success. Of course, Napoleon, state title here a couple of years ago. And But uh, you talk about those teams, and, you know, in my old life, when I was able to run the state basketball tournament, something special about those people, and there are more of them, but they're so respectful of the opportunities. They're so good people. And there's something to be said about that, why their teams are successful. You know, it's not just about basketball. It's about, you know, teaching life skills. And um, there's a reason for the success. It's not just the athletic ability. And I think another thing that you, the quality is that those teams have year in and year out, they don't take it for granted. No. There's no expectations or no, oh, no, we just, that every time it, it's special, it means something. It, you know, it, they treat it like a big deal, and that's why it is. You know, I, I, I kind of smile at this a little bit. Probably, I'd say 12 years ago or so, there were a few schools. They won a state title. You know, they get met at the town limits by the fire trucks. Now, you see them all doing it. And I think, how cool is that? That is just so, but that's a, something that the small schools have brought to the table. You even see big schools now doing it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's good when the communities get behind it. And, you know, I think that's obviously something that started with these small towns. And everybody kind of wanted to emulate that as another turnover. And the ball will go back to Ottawa Glendorf. I suppose some coaches probably think, okay, they meet us at the city limits. Uh-oh, one of my kids in trouble, you know. <laughs> I can tell you with, uh, you know, Shawnee, the Shawnee soccer, the success that they just had coming off oh, of their, yes. their first championship. You know, that was a late night. And a couple of their, you know, their regional final win and even that state win, they got back very late, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Police, fire, yep. and crowds yep. still waiting, still met them, sirens through the town because it meant that much to the town and the community. Yep. And, and that's why high school sports are special just in general. You just, you just hit it. That's exactly what I was going to say. You want to know what's great about high school sports? You just said it. 5-12 left to go in tonight's game as the Wildcats trying to get something going here on offense late. Three-pointer you know, on its way. That one's going to come up short. It'll go back to Ottawa Glendorf. There are ten players on the floor right now, five on each team, of course. And You know, you say, well, how many of these players are going to go in and play in college? I don't know. They all probably want to. But, you know, most of them won't. And But you know what? Most of them... Because of their communities, you know, it takes a village to do all of this. And they're going to be good students. They're going to be good citizens. And, you know, I know that's a little, you know, dreamy and everything, but it's really true about high school sports. So Brinkman has this one partially blocked, ends up in the hands of Chips. As Napoleon is continuing to fight hard here in the final moments of the fourth quarter. Chips trying to get down low. Hazelman just comes out of nowhere, rips that one away. Boy, just great help side defense. Erford down low. Aldrich kicks it back out. Extra pass. Shot on its way. That one's no good. That last steal by Hazelman, you know, that's where soccer really comes in. You know, she has such good field vision when she's on the soccer field. And right there, that was such great vision from the backside helping. Errant pass, going to go out of bounds. It'll go back to Ottawa Glendale. Substitution for Napoleon, number 20, Jenna Overhouse, and number 23, Cora Burrell. Right, 
So just under four minutes left to go here in the game as Ottawa Glendorf is on top, 56-24. Hazelman trying to find somewhere to go with the basketball, gets it into the hands of Brinkman. She's going to drive, gets it up off the wow. glass and in. I think that one was even partially deflected. Still managed to get down for two. Carly Brinkman, the 5'7 sophomore. What a nice crossover move and laid it off the glass. Going to have another tie-up possession arrow. Will favor Napoleon as Emma Brinkman had done a nice job of getting in there, grabbing that one up. We'll have some more stuff. So much of that comes from help side defense, you know, and that's something that I, I kind of watch teams warm up, and I, you can kind of tell sometimes in their warm up what they emphasize in practice. And a lot of them run a shell drill in practice, and you can really just tell they, they emphasize that every single night. Cora Burrell comes up with a big three pointer, able to get that one to go down. Brinkman's going to drive, gets this one up and in. Carly Brinkman. Carly Brinkman having a nice night. She has five. And we will have a timeout. This one is going to be by Napoleon. It will be a full timeout. That means we will step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alt Seamless Spouting. Under three minutes left to go here in the game. Another three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good. Chased down by Cruz. Cruz works up top against Aldrich. Has to get rid of it. And this one gets smacked back by Aldridge. Gonna have another run out for the Titans. Easy two points for it, Megan Horseman. We see the two points at the end and all of that was caused literally by Carly Brinkman. Pressure on the basketball, caused an errant pass. Pass goes ahead and a score by Ottawa Glendorf. So I believe that we are in with that last basket. That was a 35 point lead if my math is correct. That means we are in a running clock. So. Even though Napoleon comes down and makes that basket, it's going to go to the free throw line. We won't stop the clock unless we get back under 30. So clock continues to run as we see Molly Rosebrook step to the free throw line. And I talked about Carly Brinkman. She's another one of those soccer players that played in the state tournament for the Titans. Ottawa uh, Glandorf now have, has a couple of girls in that we saw get some JV minutes as well as they continue to build that depth. As when The style of play that they are going to play every night from start to finish, if they can build that depth, that is just makes them that much more dangerous. As we saw, see Micah Aldrich come all the way across the lane getting to the basket for two. Minute 15 now left to go. 34 point lead for Ottawa Glandorf. Oberhouse drives, that one's no good. Gonna go out of bounds. And it will go back to the Titans. Just too many hands in there. You know, they're they're getting good looks at it. You know, like, well, you know, why didn't we connect on that? But boy, there's just a lot of hands and again, that's the tail of the game right there. The the defensive pressure. So final 40 seconds of the game as Ottawa Glandorf is going to win their seventh game of the year. Napoleon will fall to five and six on the season. Ottawa Glandorf, a big game in next week. WOSN will be here as they take on the Crestview Knights. Crestview just come, came off of a big victory, handing Liberty Benton their first loss of the season. And Liberty Benton... Came in and knocked off Ottawa yes, Glandorf not too long ago. So that Crestview Ottawa Glandorf game is going to be a, a great game and one that I'll be lucky enough to be here for, and you guys can catch on WOSN. At the final buzzer, Ottawa Glandorf is going to take home the victory as they win 64 to 30. And Jerry, it was all Ottawa Glandorf from start to finish tonight. Yeah, and I've said it many times, but 
you know, it was a defensive pressure that set the tone for everything. And there was just, you know, that was the end of the game from the beginning. A lot of offensive rebounds early on. So Ottawa Glendor seems to be rounding back into form. They got a late start because of the success of their soccer team. But we know that this team is going to compete night in and night out. And a couple of hiccups here in the early going, but they look dangerous as ever. So that is just going to about wrap it up from us here at the Supreme Court. I'd like to thank our crew tonight, Megan and Kelsey, working the cameras, doing a great job as always. All the work that goes back on in the studio as well. We appreciate everything you guys do, making us sound and look so good. We really appreciate it. One final time from the Supreme Court, Ottawa Glendorf knocks off the pullion 64-30. For Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Nate Garlock. Have a great night, everybody.